Hey everyone, this is episode 84 of Mineral Time. Welcome back. Here with me is not on purple, but eliminated and purple, OSG. How's it going, sir? Ah, uh, man, what's going on, bro? What's going on? Yeah, just chilling. I, I, I wore this tonight in homage. Uh, we, we got eliminated, and you know, and then uh, the Dash is starting up their season uh, here in uh, just a couple of days now. So I was like, what am I going to wear? Tonight? What am I going to wear? You know, I'm just going to wear what I was already wearing earlier. So, like, you know, homage. So, you know, chilling, just watching stupid Miami beat Nashville. So, looking, waiting for the next game, which I think is a. Two Mexican teams, so that'll be a better game to watch. So, what's going on with you, dude? Oh, just wearing the third kit reminds me a lot of Conor Calf because they've been, they've been using a lot, like back in 2013 uh, when they were playing. And and yeah, I, I wasn't really thinking about like the, the dash news that just happened because it was, of course, announced out of nowhere. Yeah, and we're definitely gonna get into that. A lot of roster updates and a new signing for the dash with a few days uh, before this uh, season opener on the road. And also uh, going through the second leg of Conca Champions against the Columbus Crew, yeah, uh, to get knocked out of the round of sixteen, and and yeah, man, it's it. We gotta go ahead and and get it because we're gonna start start I'm, with the bad bad news, right? Yes, bad news okay. first. All right, all right, good, yeah. good, 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 good. Let's get let's get into the bad news first. Let's cry first. I got I got my oh, hand yeah. behind me somewhere. Good. <laughs> grab, grab, that, grab your hand, get your binky. Yeah, so, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not my binky. I gotta be able to talk. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but bad news, of course. Uh, losing. Well, we didn't sp- technically lose the second leg, but we are out, knocked out of the uh, out of the round sixteen on the aggregate score by two to one. Uh, Dynamo tying Columbus Crew one to one. Hey, we gotta go on the road, but not enough and. And yeah, because of that, Houston are out of the tournament, and we are now back to MLS. And man, you know, we we both said we were okay with it, right? We were okay with it. And the yeah. one thing, the only positive, well, there's two positives I'll, I'll take it from this game. Uh, the the first one is the the thing that I mentioned last game is the fact that the boys have to fight. They fought. Obviously, the uh, letting that first goal in was not ideal, especially the way uh, that ha- that turned out, and and really, just just a lack of opportunity to like get back into it up until like the end of the game wasn't ideal either. But they held Columbus to one goal, and they they put in the effort again. The issue with the with the roster and all that, uh, but also still making it work as much as he can, and and they got the result. But but of course, like I said, aggregate score matters and. They got knocked out because of that, so there's that to consider. And also the other positive part to mention, uh, Osman Silla getting his Dynamo debut after signing with Dynamo uh, recently, so congrats to him. And I'm looking forward to seeing him play more. If not, be, uh, let it be Dynamo too, because I'm sure he's going to get way more playing time that way. But but yeah, how are you feeling about you? Yeah, man. Well, geez, you just jumped right, right, right through it all at the same time. And let's, yep. let's, 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 let's work through it, bro. So calm down, yeah. slow, slow down. I'll speak to start, <laughs> start, yeah, dude. Like you're just like trying. I know it's bad news. Like you're just trying to kill it, bro. All right. Yeah. There's the lineup. Can we just start with the lineup because there was some curiosity yep. there, and I have some takes there. Then we can run through the, you know, the 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 that what happened during the game, and you know, then, then, then let's 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 praise the kid Silla because damn, you subbed him in before we even talked about the game. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, bro, the the lineup, bro, yeah. Uh, you have it in front of you, or shit, uh, it was. Yeah, uh, I got it. You got it? Okay, yeah, if you could go through it, because I know there are some changes, and I know I'm going to get one wrong. Well, the ones that, that pop out, so just comparing it to the, to the first leg, because the we did make a couple adjustments defensively, and that's Bartlow, uh, uh, Bartlow replacing uh, Shechenko. Obviously, right. that was like an issue like with the, the, the injury in the, in the first leg, and, 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 and that also Mikael staying in the back line, so not, not much change there. And Escobar and Dorsey, right, right, um, okay. So what was that? It was Bar- just just Bartlow by himself, okay. And then the yep. the, the midfield was Grey Goose, uh, Coco, and um, uh, Arthur, right? Okay, boom. 
Yeah, yeah the same from last game, yeah. Yeah, and then and then up top. Uh, uh, up top was a, 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 a yep. Liu, a Liu, Bossy, and Seba, according to Ben. And it looked like it was a Liu, Seba, Bossy for most of the time, a lot of the time. But so when I, when I found out those three were starting, I thought it was going to be Seba, a Liu, Bossy. And I was like, okay, cool. I want to see how this works. I, I, I do kind of like this, you know, and, and uh, a Liu is dangerous, dangerous enough to where these two are going to be open on either side at one point. We just got to move the ball well enough. and We do like to move the ball well. This, is, this could work. But instead, it started out with, and I, and I said, I'd say something to myself right before the game even started, with Aliyu on the left, whoever in the friggin' middle, Bossy Seba, and then Bossy Seba on the right. And I'm like, oh, man. So we're going to have those guys just kind of roaming all around on the right like they always do. But now one of them is playing a striker. So we had no striker at all in the game. Playing one, yep. playing a left wing that we, we could use as a forward. I know everybody hates him as a forward, and he misses. But, you know, he he he, he, he just he's going to miss from left wing as well, too. He's just more dangerous on the left because he's more open with space and can and, and can gain more ground. Uh, it, and it, he's able to gain control of the ball. His, his first touch is it's not the best of ball, so that makes it hard for him right there. So uh, that was something that I thought, that, man, well, but, and adjust if it's not working. Because it it looked like it was just so stagnant, and even the announcer said that nobody wants to go for goal. <laughs> it was just, yep. the, the game's being played in the, in the in the midfield. Like God, even you know Christian Ramirez had a few chances. He started by the you know, for for uh, Columbus, and he he was kind of dangerous on the opportunities he got. But yeah, but whatever. I'm not the coach. I but I, I would have liked to seen it at least. You know, make the switch for like ten minutes after maybe late in the second half and, and then maybe switch back if you're not liking how it's, how it's rolling and then you still have the whole second half to play it or or do it in the second half for a little bit just like but you don't have to say hey i'm making a switch and then you're stuck with the switch you can go back so i uh, it's just curious I, something that could have been done right there i don't know that was just my thoughts well i did say initially like a few episodes ago i think that ali yes a striker is it's like at least to the start of the season, it's a no-go for me. Um, and yeah, it's just unfortunate. But then again, with the situation we have right now with the roster, but, but yeah, one of the more negatives of this game is that... Yeah, yeah, it's it's an emergency and, and understandable. But at the same time, like, one of the negatives, like heading to this one, and the main reason that we got knocked out is because of lack of preparation. One of the things that I really believe is that we were not expected to qualify for this tournament last year, and <laughs> we were putting all of our, uh, we were pretty much just like betting everything on on the, on last season to go just as well. And obviously, last year we did so well, and yeah. we got the we qualified because we won the Open Cup, and which is which is amazing. But really, yeah. like it's 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 still like an issue that I don't want to excuse uh, Pat Onstad and Nash Mellison because. They could have done better, and um, and really, like it's just upsetting that we had we have we have to we let things go this way, especially because we missed all these opportunities. Like going back, going even back to the first leg, we created so much. Like everyone was just like afraid to shoot, and and we're just missing that game changer, that designated player that we could use. Yeah. You know, and yeah, yeah, and yeah. And when I, at least, and I'm pretty sure you do, we, and that's why you don't hear us talking so much about Pat and Asher. We know they're doing a good job and behind the scenes they're working and things aren't lining up and, and there's other intangibles behind it, i.e. Sebas is going to return and they're expecting Sebas to do something to be something. And that's that DP striker that's up there. Uh, it, it, yes, there could have been somebody, could have been something, could have been somebody, but maybe, you know, maybe it is true and every single opportunity fell through and didn't make it all the way to the finish line. It, it's, it is possible. You, you don't, you're, you're, you're thinking it's not feasible. Odds would, wouldn't do that to you, but that's, that's when you're playing the odds. Okay? You know, it, it is feasible. It could happen. I'm not saying it did happen. Who knows? You know, there, it, it, it could be, a, uh, <laughs> They only tried to go out and get one player, and that one player didn't cross the line. So you know, it also could be that. You don't know how many people they tried to go look at and how many people they tried to sign. It is clear that they did, uh, according to Pat. He has said that. So something will come through in this window just for support. 
right now. Uh, ho- 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 hopefully, it'll be a, a good versatile, a good vers- versatile, something versatile that it'll just be. But just to calm us down. But man, a striker would be nice. So Sebas, I hope he, he's working hard and and doing his stretches as he needs to do to make sure that when he comes back, that he'll be able to he'll be able to hustle and he'll be able to get back into ninety minute uh, fit fast. Yeah, and like I said initially, they held up. I guess I guess one of the best teams in MLS, which was great. We didn't get blown out by a Liga MX team, which is great. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of positives going going for the team heading into okay, heading back to MLS. So there's that, but but still, a lot of construction still left to go. A lot of development for for, uh, for some of the inexperienced players we have on the roster. Even though uh, the Dynamo TC is about to start, so. Man, I'm looking. I'm still looking forward to this season, especially with like the movement that can happen, uh, like from here until uh, the next window as well. Yeah, I'm. I'm interested. I'm, I, I don't expect nothing to come that'll just choo, thread the needle. I just want to see something that'll happen. Also, now is the time. Hey, if we're not able to make these moves, is where Pat needs to pressure Bryn to actually. Hey, you need to. This is where you need to look at some of these younger players and give them some opportunities to to play and see if if they they could make the transition properly to the MLS and, and, and to the first team and and be something that could uh somebody Ben could use. But he, he, he doesn't want to make those changes. Granted he did use Silla this game. It was for six, seven, eight minutes or whatever plus time. So finally we were happy to see him and I think it was just I don't I don't know why it was but now's the time to use some of these other players and just throw them out there. So now that the tur- that tournament's over, you know, now you're back to MLS season. So it's kind of hard to do that because you don't want to just – he doesn't want to risk a game. And, and it's and it's one of these younger players that don't have a, a chemistry with the players on the field. And, and it just ends up that's how we lose the game. You know, Brooklyn Reigns comes in and, and it's not the chemistry. It's just the unfortunate that he just loses the ball right there and gives up that damn goal back then and makes a mistake. So it's just on everybody's brains. But, uh, yeah, we'll be fine. It's a struggle. Don't worry. I'm not pulling my hair out like half these other people are. So they can keep stressing out. I'm trying to live. I'm trying to live a little bit longer. I don't know why, but I'm just trying to live a little bit longer. But yeah, that was fun. (laughs) and, and, And so now that we're out of this, we're back to MLS, like you said. We have Portland on Saturday in Houston, back to MLS play on a 7.30, uh, 7.30 game as as, as normal. Uh, I, I'm unable to make it to Houston this weekend for that game. Uh, so if you're listening, Surge member, uh, yeah, I doubt. There might be. There might be. There might be. Hit me up. I got one ticket. Or Roshan, you know. I got, yeah, yeah, Roshan, but he won't need a ticket. He's, he's already got a ticket, so. But uh, hit me up. Get I, away. Got, That's okay. I, 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 I got a ticket. So uh, uh, probably Friday, if I haven't heard from somebody by then, uh, we'll see. What's today? No, oh, yeah. Yeah. That yeah, I'm yeah. back home <laughs> this so, weekend. Come get my ticket. Yeah. Get a ticket. Uh, because he, he's going he's gonna to be pissed if no one picks it up. And he's just going to force it to someone else. Yeah, yeah. We'll make it work, though. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, go ahead. Portland in in Houston, and that's gonna be this, uh, that this weekend, and also this weekend. To segue to the good news, yeah. that started the season in end of and mm-hmm. that number two. But we're gonna get started with Dash because we got updates. Even after we recorded in real time a few days ago, we still got pieces uh, pieces and updates because we finally got the. Well, the final asterisk roster to start the season, and that's all to talk about. But before that, we got a new player, and this was reported about a month ago by like someone on Twitter. I forgot the source. I'm sorry, but uh, this was like actually, actually reported, made official today by the Dash, being that uh, we finally signed a Swedish international midfielder, Enli Rubinson from BK Hacken. And for a transfer fee, the transfer fee was not uh, made public by either club, but we know her market value is, I, I believe, at between fifty to sixty thousand euros. So, I mean, finally, uh, I think we mentioned this in the, in last time we we talked about her. 
Um, obviously, experience. We're gonna need it, especially for like the, this this time around, and because we're, I, I'm not sure how far else is gonna roll out. Assuming that things go his way whenever he was a Celtic, great. But I I mostly just prefer the signing because of the um, experience and especially just making appearances in the World Cup for Sweden. So I'm looking forward to it. And she's in town. She's in town already. Don't know how yep. long she's been practicing, so don't know what kind of availability she will have against North Carolina Courage in North Carolina on Saturday at 6 o'clock. So I, I expect to see her on the bench and come off the bench. Maybe late, depending on how this game is. I also don't know how Fran is with his uh with his players. She is new, and she's probably learning the same thing, but she may fit in. Um she was a uh, uh, a double a pivot six, not a pivot six, a double six with her her, her current her previous team. So she did rotate amongst the. the she's a D mid. She's a D mid. Let's just put it that way. Her priority is a D mid. She is versatile. She can play midfield anywhere. She can play the right. She can play the left. She can play right wing back where Alozi played before we finally put her up in the right wing, right forward. Uh, so she's very versatile. But she's for for me. Seeing her fit with this team, she'll be that CDM next to Sophie, and she can play on either side. She is left-footed, so guess what? She'll be on the left. Sophie will be on the right. She is very dangerous. She's, I like her goal ratio that she has as a CDM. I, I did see that they do rotate her a little bit, so it, uh, I think here she's going to probably like that she's going to get to plant herself and, and be in a position uh, of, of necessity. Uh, and Teresa Alves will probably be right in front of her in, in kind of like a triangle. And, and then it's just it's just wide open what's gonna what's really gonna happen. Dior Donia's above and Teresa, Maria to the left out there, Losey to the right. You know, you, you don't know what, what's gonna go on. You know, we you got players missing as well. So <laughs> the, but R- Rubinson I I like. I, I like a lot. And um I think this is going to fit perfectly with the team, and this will also be creative with the attack. And, uh, yes, sure shot starter. So don't expect her to start game one, but the home opener, I expect to see her to start and and be a key piece of this team for a a good year or two, Uh, I hope. I hope. She's 30, she's not old, and this player's not old. I, I like what I see. Honestly, I, I wish her success. I'll make no bias, <laughs> but I, I was just thinking, like, really, just out of context. But I, f- I feel like this season might just be Andressa season. So, um, man, I'm so excited for the home opener. Oh yeah, I expect Andressa to be killing it too, uh, to be killing it. And like I said, uh, Aaron Ru- Ru- Rubinson is how I I, for, I didn't listen to it, how to pronounce her name correctly, but. Uh, I do expect her to be a vital piece, and that's what's going to be key to interest in scoring some of those goals. And uh, when we get into the roster, your girl Yuki, I think now looking at what the roster is and how it's shaping up, is going to be a very, very, very vital piece and may may even link in with the starting lineup a lot. So uh, this this addition is is a very is very huge for the dash and. It makes me feel better about the dash right now. I think the dash are kind of wheeling. There's some as we go through the roster, we'll talk about that part later. But uh, this one fits, and um, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing her play with us. She's just, she was just the Swedish female national player uh, of the of the year for, for that's for that into the entire country. So uh, she is still playing on the Swedish national team. I hadn't seen her play a 2024 match yet. But I don't know if Sweden's played a match. I didn't do. I didn't go into the research that much. Yeah, she did play all twenty twenty three with them. She hasn't played anything in twenty twenty four yet. So I don't know. If she's still a national team player, but wouldn't be surprised if she still is. And she is an international player for the Dash, which I'm not keeping keeping count, even though it's right there in the roster sitting in front of me. <laughs> but are you excited that I am, bro? You're not. You said you, you're feeling undressed, so that's okay. It's uh, uh, for the team. I meant not 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 individually. I'm not just excited. I'm happy yes. because the Dash are back. Yes, and and obviously new coach, 
uh, new technical director. They haven't announced yet, but we know it's happening. And and honestly, just just a new team. Like we're just a new face of the dash, and just seeing the growth for like the past eleven years has been incredible. Uh, obviously, just being like technical coming in and just influencing all all, all those types of moves, like in the front office uh, to the team itself. But the one thing we need is just a strong team. Because we've had it in the past a couple of times, but we just need a consistent team, especially after last year, the disappointment of last year. Uh, this this team deserves more, and I know they can go for it. I'm very curious. I th- I think you're right, though. This team has a lot of potential. What and, and a new coach, so you don't know. So. You, the, I would say the experts probably not giving them much credit, and that's fine. That just means anything we build from from now is up, and we get back to where we were. So uh, I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to this season, and I want to see Fran in action. And I feel better about him than I do late than I did Lady, and I was feeling good about Lady whenever he started too as well. So I hope that's not a sign, but I really do like this hire. So. <laughs> And he was proven. He's proven over there as a coach, not as an assistant coach. So this is different. Uh, there shouldn't be much comparisons to Lady anyway. So uh, let's 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 roll let's roll the dice and and DTFO, man. Yep. <laughs> but this also announced today is very interesting to me, bro. Just just as you were getting yep. ready to say that. I, I wanted you to know that this is very interesting that you're getting ready to tell everybody. So, yeah, and also today it also announced the uh, the the 23 player a roster to start the year, and there's a few to talk about because there's def- there, there's been cuts as every year is. So we're, we're gonna we're definitely gonna go through those, but first we're gonna go through the players that are staying. Uh, with the team. So, as for goalkeepers, we are uh, still keeping Jane Campbell. No surprise. Uh, Emil Alvarado and Savannah Madden. They're, they're going to be the backups. And so, so, so goalkeepers, bro. We can start with them. Yeah. No, it's pretty easy. You just talk to said their names. Bing. Now, uh, I, ex- I don't, like I said, we don't know Fran. I expect Emily Alvarado to get some random starts here and there. Whether it be that whatever the hell tournament is going on that we don't know about and understand yet uh, during uh, when the Olympics is going on or or what, but I, I don't. I, Jane is obviously the keeper, but uh, it, it, I don't remember if there's plenty of weekday games with the dash. But I, I see Emily Alvarado getting some opportunity and being utilized. Uh, yep. and, and not just sitting on the bench waiting for Jane Campbell to get hurt or, or needing to be subbed out because something happened to her. No, let's just give her some time. I'm not saying take anything away from Jane. I'm saying give Emily some some time and let her play. Let her stay. Let her stay clean. And let her stay focused, please. Yeah, and we're also sticking with six defenders heading into the season. So Woo! Chappie. Uh, Chappie, no question. Uh, she's going to material leave, though, so it's, it might be a while. Uh, Madeline Desiano, uh, Julissa Harris, Natalie Jacobs, Katie Lind, uh, Courtney Peterson, Sarah Puningham, and Croy Soto, uh, the non roster body that, that was brought, brought in for the preseason. Uh, she signed a contract, and the Dutch mentioned that she signed for uh, signed for the 24, 24 preseason with an option for 2025. So, that's pretty good news. Obviously, looks like a death piece for them, and looking forward to it because she has like a lot of a lot of positive reviews from the fans from Casey Current and Katie Lind. Oh gosh, excuse. I mean, what can we say? Excuse <laughs> absence. I mean, what can I say? Yep. You're mi- that that tells me uh, this is an assumption and an implication. This is not a confirmation that she's missing Saturday's game or when I would be available for Saturday's game. And I do not like that. That that is my centerpiece. That leaves Natalie Jacobs alone with Sarah Puntingham and probably Jalissa Harris if if it's me starting them. And I'm I'm good with Jalissa Harris. And I'm getting better with Natalie Jacobs. 
she's probably the girl that I've got most uh, my eyes on and I'm watching her, you know, the year before it was Jane and I, I, I made a mistake. So this is the girl I'm focused on making uh, better and I want to be wrong. So Natalie Jacobs, come on woman, uh, Jalissa Harris. And uh, who'd you say, who was the other one? Shit. Uh, Puttingham. Yeah. Is yeah. my, is my expected three bro. And that's, and that's killer. You got Courtney Pierce and Croy Soto, like you said, uh, Katie Lynn with the excuse absence killing me right now. So Katie Katie Lynn comes back really quick. I hope it's just something quick that she that she needs. Uh, it's maybe Jalissa Harris has to come back out. I wouldn't be so mad if Sarah Puntenkamp comes out. Uh, I I'm gonna wait and see to see how they play this season. I did not like Puntenkamp as a defender last season. She did all right. I did not like her enough to be at my starting left back when there's other options there, I thought. So we'll see. We'll see. So defenders is Man, crazy. I feel so like that, that's your three, right? Sorry. You yeah. Feel. And no, you're good. I feel I feel like they can pull up the three uh the th- the the three back line. And it just sucks that we haven't been able to see anything. I always have to like find out on opening day. But, but we we'll see how have, that goes. But but we have seen them play in person yeah their formation you seen how he played their formation across the seas so yes it is what we're expecting we're not comp it's not been confirmed yet this is what we're expecting as a back three yeah. and, a, and it's a it's a three four three three five two variation to 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 me very very curious to see what it is going to be though you're right it is. I am not confirming his formation at all. <laughs> yeah, and it's got, it's going to be a high bar for them, especially coming out yeah. of last year. Yeah, uh, the best defense in the league. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens there. Defense will be a big question. So yeah, man, move us into the 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 mighty midfielders. Adding our Swedish girl that's coming in to it. Yeah. Obviously, uh, Ellen Rubinson just added, uh, also just included in the in the roster. Uh, Andresa staying in, of course. Uh, uh, well, uh, Bryce staying as well. Sophie, uh, Sophie Hurst, uh, Sophie Schmidt, Ivana Solon, and Barb. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I knew you were going to say that. And she's becoming quite a personality on the on the dash uh, uh, segments that they be. The, the, they they pushing out whenever the the admins asking questions to the to the players out of surprise and stuff like that. She's having fun and look, uh, I'm looking forward to her coming off the bench and playing in quite a, a, a playing playing quite a nice of a role player. Uh, this you mentioned off air. Andresa Alves is probably going to have the the play that the, the play see the the season. She's probably going to be the player of the season. And there's Alves right there, right? Is is that what you're saying? Did I hear you right, or are you are you just saying it, she's going to be, mm. be hot? Not player of the year for the NWSL. I'm talking about for the season for the dash. You obviously have Maria, Ardonias, and yeah. Lozzi. I'm um, yeah, Lozzi is also feeling it. Bobby's feeling it. And... Alves has been dangerous. Yep. Yeah, I was gonna say that, like we we have Alosi, like right right over there, Bombi mm-hmm. over there, Ordonez over there, mm-hmm. and man, <laughs> I, at this point it's kind of like a flip of a coin. So yeah, I will be front and center for those awards. I hope. <laughs> yeah, oh, at the Dash Awards, I want to be there, and I want to I want to hear that. But I I'm looking forward to a Robinson and Smith playing next to each other, side by side in the in the midfielders. That's what I'm expecting. Or somewhere in the midfield together, so I'm looking forward to that. And it's just taking over the midfield and being rambunctious, and it's going to be hard for other teams to get around. To get well, actually, not a, they're going to have to get around us. They can't go down the middle. It's going to be really tough to get down the middle. So I, I'm okay with the, the way the midfield is is built right here. I'm a little more confidence in the midfield than than I am in the defense right there with Katie Lynn and her excuse absence missing for a, a undetermined time. And yeah, we'll have to wait and see. This girl right here, MIA, mm-hmm. M the fuck I A. That's all right. In our hearts forever. Yeah, well, <laughs> now I could get it signed by the team. 
Yep. <laughs> I could flip it over and get it signed by the team. Right. Or, or sign it back there. I think I'm going to flip it over and get it signed on the on the front by the team and leave her to herself and her name and her number on the back. And that's where it belongs anyway. So. Legend. Yeah. Think, yeah. That's, yeah. 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 I think it's a good idea. Anyways. So, yeah. Just get a red, red dash play. Ooh. Dash players for the career signed on that. So yeah, I guess let's yeah let's let's move on before hard cry. Yep. So we also have last but not least the forwards. I'm still sticking out to the seven that we have, and you know these names, and and obviously Michelle Losi, uh, Ryan Garys. Uh, she's also maternity leave, so you would want to see her for a while. Uh, Paul uh, Paul Garbaglia, she's listed as well, but she's gonna be on loan. Uh, out for the rest of the year, so uh, we, she just like right there, uh, included on the team. And CC Kaiser, obviously, just brought in from uh, Casey Current, uh, Yuki Nagasato, uh, signed as a free agent. Uh, Diana Ordonez, Every Patterson, all right, uh, but Maria Sanchez and Amanda West. Very nice. Yes. Yeah, I'm excited about Avery Patterson, man. I told you that's my sleeper right there, uh, and I think that girl's gonna come off the bench and 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 put in some some late golosos, bro, and just scare defenders, and they're not gonna be able to handle her late if they're tired. Uh, so I'm I'm excited about her, and I'm hope I'm right and looking forward uh, looking forward to it. You know, and the Canadian and Amanda West, we'll see if she, what, what she can pull off and. and and get into but man the forwards but like you're, you said it's crazy and paulina gramagnolia uh, I, I was hoping she was going to return i don't understand the two-year loan just get rid of her if you're not going to keep her or bring her back but i was looking forward to her coming back to us and, and utilizing her i, I like what yep. she can do so a low z uh, Ordonez and Sanchez, I expect a lot out of them, and I expect more out of a Lozy a little bit. You're going to get a full season now playing playing the position you want to play, as we're expecting, of course. So I don't know where you're playing technically. I don't know the formation. You could be that, that fifth winger out there in the three five two formation as well. So that could be very dangerous for her at the same time. Maria on the left, a Lozy on the right. Ordonez and Patterson up top, uh, Al- Alves, uh, Schmidt, Rubinson. Dang, man, gonna be dangerous. So, uh, in the defense, being the defense, I'm looking forward to it. But I think, you know, looking at it, Yuki is going to become a role player. And she's having such a preseason right now. Her and Adressa Alves are having such a great preseason that they're going to have stellar seasons and stand out. And Yuki's Yuki's already taken to the team pretty well, it looks like. And uh, I do expect a lot and be excited when you see her play. And she does bring energy for her age to the field. And y'all will like her and y'all will root for her. And she, she will be we quickly become a fan favorite. Trust me on that one. You'll find out, get to the stadium and find out yourself. So boom, mic drop. No. <laughs> it's a, this a bias take, but I feel like a Yuki's going to be like the dark horse of the team. Like no one's going to expect it. And she's going to provide all the goals or most of them. Except and, I just told everybody unless they don't listen. <laughs> right. And one thing I also wanted to mention is that, so in the preseason roster, Every Patterson was listed as a midfielder, but when the uh, when the the roster the full roster was announced, she was listed as a forward. And obviously, heading after the draft, we found out that she could play several positions, either either in, as a midfielder or a forward. So I'm guessing uh, she's going to be most likely use, utilized as a forward now. Yeah, or right. she's going to be like shot around. So we don't we, we don't really know. So, but I just found it interesting. She's gonna play her position. I think the midfielder was a was a mishap. She was drafted as a forward. I think the midfielder was just a, a written wrong. And then you know she's gonna be playing as a forward here. She's being played in her position, what she played in in college, and and they're utilizing her right. So I hope they're utilizing her as forward. Like I said, I think she's gonna be dangerous, and that's my that's one of my dark horses and a rookie coming out of that as as, as well too. You know, Ordonez may just not having a good game, and 
Uh, her speed is her her lack of speed is 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 helping the defenders out. Amy Patterson comes in completely different striker, bro, and just changes the game up. Or plays side by side next to Ordonez, and you got two different type of strikers, bro. Though you know those two type of strikers always kind of they just ignite and hit goals. So you never know, bro. L- listen to me, Amy Patterson is mine. You know, uh, my dark horse. I I look I look forward to seeing what she can do, and I hope she gets some time. So. Boom. The one thing I also wanted to mention is that the Dash are also working on getting more signings to do the line, at least by the time the season starts or right around, like, a little bit after. We still don't know the timing, but... And we're mentioning that because they did cut nine players from the preseason roster, and as um, some of those were actually uh, the draft picks that were made. So Heather Hintz, uh, Alisa Bouchois, uh, Kiki Van Satten, I have been cut, and we still don't know which one specifically they're trying to sign back. But I'm I'm hundred percent sure, like Kiki Van Sant, that they're gonna try to bring it back at, at some capacity. Is that a homerism right there? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a we'll see. It's a take. <laughs> yeah, and I thought she played decent too this preseason. She did score a goal at one point, but you know I, I wasn't at practice or anything like that to see. You know, but yeah, it's one. It could be one of those where you had to cut some. You had to cut them because it was time to cut uh, because the NWSL rules. And then you you're working out a deal, and you'll you'll sign them back up here uh, later this week. So we'll maybe hear something before the game or right after the game next early next week, and uh, these players are signed. Uh, maybe we'll hear something tomorrow. You you, you never know. You never know. Yep. Tomorrow uh, we get the we get to hear the pre, the press conference from. Uh, Fraud prior to the game on on Saturday as well. So if you're hearing this, go to Noodle Tempio. Those will be on the on the Twitter uh, Twitter space, and you'll be able to hear the listen to the press conference and see what he has to say. And I'll make sure to post some places that you always see him. So uh, I, I'm ready for the season. I am I am excited. I'm feeling better. Six o'clock. I'll be I'll be tuned to into it and and. Uh, Ready for it, man! I'm so excited, and like I said previously about the dash, like the possibilities are endless. Especially since we don't know, but like, we have the assumptions on how what this team can be, just because of the coach and how how Fran Alonso has like played overseas. But we're still, to an extent, we're we're still going blind into this one, and that's what's yeah. keep, like keeping me excited. Because we're only a couple of days away for the opener, yeah, like a little bit over a week before the home opener, and I cannot wait to be there. It's it's gonna be, I, I'm feeling it. Hell yeah, looking forward to it. We're right there in the stadium watching the dash. <sighs> looking forward to it as well. So first things first, so a friggin' road game to start the dang season. So I hope Ordonez gets a hat trick. And reminds <laughs> North Carolina why they traded her away. <laughs> and just that'll be it. great. Yeah, right. hat trick for her. And just put them away. No. But yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one, guys. Support the dash, support Dynamo Two as well. Uh, they will start this weekend. They're back at home, so get your tickets now before you regret it. And man, so excited for the season to start. And so, no, so, no losses, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no losses. And, and, and before you end it, so on, on Monday's episode, whenever we go over the weekend, we'll talk about the new addition to the Dynamo that has been that'll be announced, or everybody will know about by then. We'll go in depth about it. Right now, it's still brand new, so yeah, we'll just wait a little further, a little longer, and let y'all just kind of uh, think about it for a minute. <laughs> Blessings, y'all. But <laughs> as always, guys, thank you so much for <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in and and your support and sharing this episode and and as always, tuning y'all. Hey, just oh. <laughs>